who's the biggest wasted talent at Miami? Any position since you Man, been me? Mark, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I man, Mark. Mm. I'll give you one in every position. How about that? Quarterback. Countless, but I'll even, I'll go with Kyle Wright. I think we that was pitiful. That was pitiful. I mean, I, I man, number one player in the country, number one quarterback in the country, and, and you got him playing in the I formation under center non sprint that we had rolling at that time. Come on, man. Uh, running back, I think I think we've had some pretty good running backs. I wouldn't say we've done that bad at that position. Um, wide receiver, I would say we've done maybe Lawrence Cager that I could remember. You know, top ten of his position came in and was okay. Goes to Georgia and takes a big, big step. I, I would say that probably him for me. Because, I mean, Amar Richards was great, but he got hurt. So that, that, that's no one's fault. Stacey Coley, could, you could argue him, but he goes on to get drafted and had a 1,000-yard season here. So can't really argue that. Offensive line, I would easily have to say Navon Donaldson or Chantro Henderson. And maybe Chantro Henderson gets the nod over Navon because – it was not on. I mean, Chantro Henderson had Art Keel, who was the best offensive line coach Miami has had. And even he couldn't get him to kind of take that step. And he was the number one player in the 2010 recruiting class going to USC. And then something happened with his transcripts at USC. So it was a whole bunch of drama surrounding that, too. Uh, but prototypical size. If he had this staff and this kind of leadership surrounding him, probably is a, a top 10 pick lot. Um, Mark Pope does come to mind at wide receiver, but I think that had more to do with scheme than, yeah, you know what, Mark Pope. Mark Pope's on that list too. He, he's at one point was thought of as a five-star and never once showed that at all at Miami. His best play was catching a, a Hail Mary tip pass against Bob Tech. And I, that's his best, his best play in my opinion. Wish him the best, but for being honest, he would fall into that category. Um, tight end. Mine would probably be Standish Dobar, but he ended up having a big drop off in his recruitment once they reevaluated him as a senior anyway and he never really got a chance to make many plays here why because he was behind David and Joku and Christopher Herndon one first round and one fourth round they're both starters in the NFL right now so I don't really necessarily know if that's his fault but and, and it, I would have to add maybe add his name at tight end just so that we had somebody there because Brevin did his thing but as much as I wanted him to be more of a change direction guy, break tackle guy, he made plays. He did. He did. Defensive line, Marcus Forster. Oh, man. Hey, do you know who that is, Mark? No, I don't remember that name. Man, Marcus Forster was a defensive tackle out of an illustrious Miami Northwestern Senior High School down in Miami. He was a part of that number one recruiting class. Five-star defensive tackle. Everyone in their mob thought he was like Warren Sapp 2.0 from the crib, of the crib, came in in that number one class. Nothing, man. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, he was like a 305, 308-pounder who kind of tried to play like R.J. McIntosh. Like he was trying to do like spins and, and swims and finesse at that size as opposed to Anchoring down and bullet playing bully ball in the interior. So it, it just it didn't mesh well. Mm. He left early as a junior because he didn't want to play foul golden and things kind of derailed there. But linebacker Raphael Kirby. Mark. <laughs> this man had like 
dude. He would hit people, Mark, in his highlight tape. He had like fireworks and explosions and all kinds of stuff happening. He, he looked ready made, 6'1, 240 pound, big, big dude. Was going to play inside linebacker next to Denzel Perriman. And man, the hype never matched what we got at Miami. <laughs> Not once. Defensive back wise, what would a guy be? I don't know, because a lot of those guys had some pretty good times or plays or seasons. Like some would probably say Tracy Howard, but if you look at Tracy Howard's 2013 season when we went nine and four. He was one of the best corners in the ACC. Had four or five interceptions, a pick six against Virginia, an interception against Florida. He was pretty good. He played pretty well. Artie Burns had a kind of a rough freshman season, but ended up having one of the best statistical seasons as a junior at Miami and goes first round. So I mean, there's that. So I really wouldn't say anybody in the secondary. Oh, yeah, they're bringing up Willie Williams. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was thinking about guys that I remember seeing play, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't necessarily see William, Willie Williams play. I was a, a youngster at that time when he signed with Miami and came to Miami. So my bad on that. But I did bring up Cal Wright, so I guess can't have it both ways. But I, I definitely didn't. I knew the story of Willie Williams, but I can't really speak to that as much as I could speak to seeing the Kyle Wright film and seeing them misuse them and put them in weird situations and stuff just going left from the quarterback position. So, yeah, um, not to get all negative after going through a really nice soliloquy with breaking you know, football down, but when Mark asks a question, I got to answer the question.